What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to find the domain and range of a function on a graph. And I'm gonna show you how to write the domain and range in interval notation, all right? So the domain, which I'll just abbreviate D, and the range, will, which, which I will abbreviate as R, okay? So the domain are just your limits that go from side to side, and the range are the limits of the graph that go up and down, okay? So in other words, the domain tells us how far to the left and how far to the right the graph goes. And on the other hand, the range tells us how high and how low the graph is. Okay, or in other words, the top of the graph and the bottom of the graph, all right? So first, let's find the domain, all right? So again, this domain tells us how far the graph goes from side to side. Okay, so the point that's furthest to the left would be this point right here at negative one comma one. And you can see that we have a closed circle, right? That's important to keep in mind. And then the point that's furthest to the right would be this point right here at five two, which has an open circle, okay? So what are the limits of the domain? Well, we would use the x-axis, right? Because the x-axis tells us how far things go to the left and how far things go to the right, okay? So this point right here, using the x-axis, we could see it hits it right here at negative one, right? We can also see that in the coordinate right here that it gives us, the x-coordinate is at negative one. So in either case, we can see that the point furthest to the left on this function is at x is equal to negative one, all right? So we're gonna say negative one. Now, for this point over here, we know it's five, two, right? So Again, using the x-axis, we can see that this point is at x is equal, right? Uh, well, let's write it up here. x is equal to positive five. Okay, that's the point furthest to the right. So we're gonna say positive five. And then to write this in interval notation, we just need to figure out if we put parentheses around our domain or if we use brackets, okay? So when you have a closed circle, you use a bracket, and when you have an open circle, you use a parenthesis, okay? So here, around this negative one, we would use a bracket, right, because there's a closed circle at that point, and where we have positive five, there's an open circle, so we would use a parenthesis. Okay, so that's the domain of this function. Now let's find the range, or in other words, the highest point and the lowest point on the graph. So here you can see that the highest point would be right here at zero three, where this closed circle is, and the lowest point would be where this closed circle is at two negative three. Okay, so to find the range, we wanna use the y-axis this time, right? Because the y-axis goes up and down, right? That's what tells us how high or low a point is. So for this closed circle right here, instead of looking at the x-coordinate, we wanna look at the y-coordinate, right? So this point right here is at y is equal to positive three, right? And then the lowest point over here Again, looking at the y coordinate, we can see that it's at negative three, right? So y is equal to negative three down here. So the lowest point on this graph is negative three, and the highest point is positive three. And they're both closed circles, so we would use brackets around both of those guys. All right, now for this next example, we're gonna do almost the exact same problem, but as you can see, what we did here is create a gap, right? So there's a break in this function, right? So it ends right here, there's a break right here, and then it starts up at this point. Okay, so let's again find the domain and range. So the domain again is just our limits furthest to the left and furthest to the right, okay? So as you can see, in this case that hasn't changed, right? So the furthest to the left is still this line right here at x is equal to negative one, and the point furthest to the right is still this point right here at x is equal to positive five. Okay, however, as you can see, this graph, it starts right here at negative one, it's covering this entire section, but then it stops right here, right? We can just draw that point down here. So it stops at x is equal to positive one. And then it picks up again at this spot right here, which is x is equal to positive two. Okay, so we have this gap right here, right? The space that we need to account for because the graph it covers all this space, but then it jumps from positive one to positive two, and then it continues, right? So in order to describe this gap in the domain, we would first write the domain of this first section right here. So let's get rid of that. So the first section right here goes from negative one to positive one, right? So the domain goes from negative one 
to positive one, okay? Now, as you can see, there's a closed circle right here at negative one, so that means we would put a bracket, and there's an open circle here at positive one, so we would put a parenthesis, okay? Now, in order to account for this gap, we would use a union symbol. And then we wanna write the other domain of this part of the graph right here. So this graph goes from positive two, right? Goes from positive two to positive five. Okay, and then here we have a closed circle at positive two. Closed circle again means bracket and an open circle at positive five means parenthesis. Okay, so again, you use these union symbols to account for the gaps in your function. Okay, and just to make something clear because it's gonna be maybe a little confusing when we talk about the range next, is let me just extend these lines where the gap is, okay? So as you can see, where this gap is, we don't have any function, right? There's no function, right? We still, we're not touching the function, we're not touching the function, we're not touch, touching the function, okay? So now, if I delete all of this, and now we talk about the range, remember, we weren't touching the function, so that's why we use that union symbol, right? But now if we talk about the range, again, we want to take the highest point and the lowest point, right? So the highest point is still right here at 0, 3, right? There's a closed circle right here. And the lowest point is going to be, again, at this point right here where we have this closed circle at 2, negative 3, okay? So then that means, again, the highest point right here is at y is equal to positive 3. And the lowest point right here runs through y is equal to negative 3. Okay, so again, our range would go from negative three to positive three, right? So from negative three to positive three. And they are both closed circles, right? So we're gonna have brackets around both of those. Now you might be saying, okay, well, don't we have to account for this space right here, this gap? Yes, we do. But in this case, if we draw our dashed lines right here, right? So this time we're gonna go sideways for the range, right? So we have to account for the gap that goes from there to the gap that goes to right there, right? But as you can see, if we're looking at this gap over here, we do see that we do have part of a function here, right? So we don't really have a gap when it comes specifically to the range, okay? Because even though this section is missing, this section is like, hey buddy, don't worry, I got you, all right? I'm, I'm filling in the gap for us, okay? So the range here has a buddy, right? That's covering this territory. But when we were talking about the domain, right, I shaded all of this space right here, right? And there, this space right here doesn't have a backup. It doesn't have a buddy. This is all just empty space, okay? So that's why we need to account for the gap in the domain. But here we have something that's covering the gap for the range. All right, now let's blastoid through these last few examples. So uh, let's start with this one right here on the left. So we basically have this W looking function, right? And we have an open circle and a closed circle. So this open circle, let's see, it's at, it looks like two, eight, right? So this open circle and sorry, negative two, right? So it's at negative two, positive eight. And then this one looks at, like it's at positive two, comma eight. Okay, so again, if we want to find the domain, we're just looking for the limits from side to side, right? Furthest to the left, furthest to the right. So we're gonna use the x-axis, right? Because the x-axis goes side to side. So we can see that the point furthest to the left would be here at negative two, right? So that's why our x-coordinate is at negative two. And the point furthest to the right is over here at x is equal to positive two, right? So it goes from negative two to positive two. Now, do we use brackets or parentheses? Well, here we have an open circle, so that means parenthesis, and here we have a closed circle, so that means bracket, all right? Now, let's talk about the range. So again, the range goes up and down, right? So uh, let's clean that up. So the range goes up and down. So we're gonna use the y-axis this time. So the highest point is right here, right? At positive eight, right? At positive eight. They just happen to be at the same spot. So the highest point, is a positive eight. And now to find the lowest point, it looks like the lowest point is the exact same spot for both sides, right? Right, it looks like right about there. What is that spot? Well, let's see, these marks go by two, so that means this one must be negative two. So it looks like it's halfway between negative two and the x-axis, so that must be, let's say, negative one. All right, so we're gonna say negative one. Now, do we use a bracket or parenthesis around negative one? 
Well, as you can see, it doesn't give us closed circles down here or open circles. So we can basically make an assumption. So we're just gonna say that this lowest point does touch negative one, all right? We're just gonna assume that unless we're told otherwise, all right? So we're gonna put a bracket around negative one and the highest point is at positive eight. And as you can see, again, we have a, an open circle and a closed circle. So when these two are at the same spot, the closed circle wins, all right? So we're gonna put a bracket around this positive eight as well, all right? Now let's go to this next one right here. So as you can see, we have this spot right here. It looks like it's at negative one, positive four, right? Negative one, positive four. And then it just goes down and looks like slightly to the right forever, right? Because we just have this arrow. So in order to find the, the domain first, we can say that the furthest point to the left is this point right here at, remember this would be negative two, so that means this spot again is negative one, right? So the domain goes from negative one and the spot that it goes furthest to the right, well, as you can see, it goes on forever, right? This doesn't just go straight down, it's kind of going in that direction, right? It's going down and also to the right forever. So if it's going to the right forever, it's going towards infinity, towards positive infinity, okay? So the domain, uh, we have a closed circle here, so that means we put a bracket, and infinities, whether it be positive or negative, always have a parenthesis, okay? Now, what about the range? So the highest point here, as you can see, again, it doesn't tell us if there's a closed circle or open circle, so we're just gonna assume it's a closed circle, and it looks like it goes through, uh, looks like, y is equal to positive seven, right? So the highest point is positive seven and the lowest point, well, this graph just goes down forever, right? Towards negative infinity. So we're gonna say the lowest point is negative infinity. So we're gonna put a parenthesis around negative infinity and we're assuming there's a closed circle at seven. So we're gonna put a bracket right there at seven. All right, here's the last problem that we're gonna cover. So as you can see, we have all these purple dashed lines right here, which are asymptotes. So those are just lines that the graph gets really, really close to, but doesn't actually ever touch, right? I know here it kind of looks like they're touching, but here we're just gonna say they get really close, but they're not actually touching, okay? So let's find the domain. So the domain, again, just goes from side to side, all right? So what's the point that's furthest to the left. Well, we can see that this bottom graph is going to the left in this direction forever towards negative infinity. So we know it goes from negative infinity. And then the point that goes furthest to the right would be this portion of the function that is going towards positive infinity. However, we have a gap in our domain, right? Because we have this asymptote right here, okay? So this graph right here never touches the asymptote, and this graph right here never touches the asymptote, right? So we have a, a gap right here at the asymptote. And where is this asymptote right here? Well, we're talking about the domain, right? Which is the x-axis. So this asymptote is at x is equal to zero, right? Or in other words, where the y-axis is, okay? So we skip over this spot right here where x is equal to zero. So that means for the domain, this bottom function, again, goes towards negative infinity, and then it gets really close to the asymptote, gets really close to zero, but it never actually touches zero. So we're gonna say that it goes from negative infinity to zero, but since it doesn't actually touch zero, we're going to use a parenthesis, okay? And then we have a gap right here, so we're gonna say union, and then it goes basically from really close to zero, right, really close to zero, but not actually zero, all the way to positive infinity, right? All the way to positive infinity. Okay, so that would be the domain in this case. Now let's find the range. Okay, so the range again goes up and down, right? So the highest point, you can see this graph goes towards positive infinity, and then this bottom graph down here goes towards negative infinity, right? So the highest point is positive, the lowest point is negative, but as you can see, we have a gap right here in our range. Okay, so this gap looks like it goes from this point right here, so a little below two, right? So we're gonna say that's approximately, let's just say it's 1.5, right? This is the spot 1.75, sorry. And then this point right here, it looks like it's a little above this line right here, which is negative two. So it looks like this line right here is at negative 1.75.
okay? So we have a gap from positive 1.75 to negative 1.75. So the range would go from negative infinity up to where the asymptote is, right, at negative 1.75, right? So the range goes from negative infinity to negative 1.75, right? But remember, we don't actually touch the asymptote, right? We just get really close. So since we don't actually touch that point, we're again going to use a parenthesis, and then we're gonna say union, right? So to take into account this gap. And then where do we start? We start at 1.75, right? Positive 1.75. And again, we're going to use a parenthesis because we don't ever touch this asymptote. We just get really close to it. And then we take off towards positive infinity like a little buzz light year. All right, so there are your final answers. Boom! So if you found the video helpful, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below.